Good afternoon, my name is Jason Grove. I'm the technical design engineer at Global Ground Support, and I'm here to talk to you about the Siemens kilometers used on our new ISIN trucks. We have the MAC 5000 transmitter head, the MAG 1100 kilometer sensor, which is comprised of the board and also the sensor prong. The flowmeter works on Faraday's law of magnetic induction. So you have an electromagnetic field and a conductor, and as the fluid is moving through it, it creates a voltage differential and it's captured via the circuit board and interpreted by the transmitter head. So the sensor prom is basically like a memory stick. It holds all the values for the flow meter. So your sensor prom goes in these little tabs right here. And it's important which direction it goes. The teeth should be facing furthest away from the side. And then if you see on the bottom, there's a spot for that sensor prong. And then it gets installed and slides in there. Then it's important to ground everything. This is a bonding strap that grounds the bore to the sensor. This is our coil cable. It goes over here. And it's installed in terminals 85, 86. This is our sensor power, and it gets installed on the other side. on 82, 0, and 83. And then you, would run, you want to run power to this 12 volt input and then also the ground. And for most of our deicers, we use what's called the passive output. And that is 57, 58, and then this shield right here. Uh, so one of the more important features is this little arrow right here that tells you the direction of the flow. Now there is a setting to use bi-directional flow on here, but to save yourself some problem, uh, some issues, always go with the direction of the arrow. The MAC 5000 head goes in here and then it's screwed down. So this is what the fully assembled flow meter should look like. So to unlock the system, we hit this button and password is 1000. To unlock it, hit that button and now we're in the setup modes. Use the directional arrows to navigate. We want to change our output. And what we use is a digital output. So we select our over button until we find digital output. Select it. And what we're doing now is changing our volume per pulse. And this will always be in US gallons. And what we're going to set it to is zero, zero. Point zero, 
one, six, seven. So after this, your volume per pulse should be zero, zero, point, zero, one, six, seven US gallon. Then we exit out. So what I've done on this is I've intentionally removed the sensor prong from the board. And as you can see, is how it's saying meters cubed per hour. And that's usually a dead giveaway that the sensor prong is either not being bred properly by the transmitter or it's not installed correctly. So in order to verify that we have a sensor prong issue, we'll go back into the system by hitting that button, selecting 1000 as a password, hitting unlock using the scroll button to go to sensor characteristics. Now if I go in here, I'm going to see that the sensor prong is not installed. So even if I set this up using our 0 0.0167 pulse and our 4.1 millisecond pulse uh, settings, the, sensor, the flow meter will work properly until it loses power. At that point, you turn back on power and you have to re-enter the settings each time because this is basically the memory of the uh, settings. So the sensor prompt if you're reading uh, it not being installed on the transmitter head and it's showing meters cubed per hour, I would check the installation of it. These slots should be facing inboard to the circuit board. If they're facing outboard then it's installed backwards. You should be able to see the big sticker on this side of the board. And it should correlate to these two tabs located on the base station. So another issue that gets brought up frequently is that Everything looks correct. Your box has power. The sensor problems installed correctly, but it's still not reading anything. And what we do there is we go to the Siemens MAG 1100 manual and it gives us trouble, troubleshooting steps. And it's always a good check to do the coil resistance check. Sometimes this coil goes bad and if that's the case, then it can't create a magnetic field and it won't ever read anything. So, in order to do this test, you need a multimeter or an ohm meter. You need to switch to ohm reading. And then you go across your yellow lead, which is your coil. And we can see that this is reading 97 ohms. The manual gives you an ohm chart depending on the diameter of your flow meter. So we can go to the coil chart and see that for our flow meter, it's 91 ohms plus or minus nine. So we can see that we're in within limits. Uh, usually a bad coil will read um, either high or low, but it's gotta be within that range. If it's not within the range, it won't read anything. That's a quick check. Um, if that's the case and you would wanna order the MAG 1100 uh, flow meter, the odds are your MAG 5000 transmitter head is still uh, usable, just the base is bad. So another important piece of this is how this is actually wired. A lot of the times this isn't wired correctly and uh, it just won't send the signal out. A lot of people think that since it has power on the screen, on the transmitter head, that means it's going to send a signal out. And in reality, 
for our application, if number 56 doesn't have power, the sensor won't have power. So usually what we do is we have a jumper that goes from 12 volts here, usually goes under the board and around to 56. This is what powers our external sensor to send a signal to wherever we want it to go. The signal is generated by terminal 57. And it's very, very, very important to have a 270 ohm resistor from terminal 57 to this shield right here. If you're missing the resistor going from 57 to the shield terminal, you won't be able to generate a signal that's readable by our um, either the heater or the PLC. That for sure. So to summarize some common issues with these flow meters, it's the installation of the sensor prom. The coil, if it goes bad, you can check that with the ohm meter per Siemens MAG 1100 service manual. The board wiring is an issue. And then sometimes the MAG 5000 transmitters, they just go bad. It's, it happens with you know, cyclical usage. And, um, You'll be able to tell that if it just doesn't light up and you'll have the correct power supply to the 12 volt in the ground. And if it doesn't light up, then usually that's an indication that the head's bad. So there's always resources available to help you troubleshoot. We have this in-house generated setting up the Siemens flow meter guide, and it's available in a link with the video. And it will tell you step by step, even the buttons to push, to program, the parameters, as mentioned before. And a really good source of information is the actual Siemens manual. It will tell you the theory of the operation, which is useful. It will tell you how to wire it. And as mentioned before, we use a passive output, externally powered. And remember, the resistor they're talking about in the literature should be a 270 ohm resistor. We'll offer you, offer you troubleshooting guide. The most common troubleshooting that's done would be the coil resistance check. And you just follow that step by step. And then use the coil resistance chart located on page 69 and it'll tell you if your base is bad or not. So another resource that's available for you is this test stand we've made in-house. It'll allow you to power up your MAG 5000 transmitter. Check to see if it's reading via potentiometer in the back and also to check to make sure your output's working. And the parts list and schematic is readily available. Just uh, reach out to our service department and we'll provide you with the information to the department. The last thing to remember is that don't hesitate to ever reach out to our service department or engineering department and we will be readily available to help you at any time. Thank you.